G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy for El Justo Latipo, as they say in Spain, probably. I don't know. We're back for a very big weekend of prelim finals. A very surprising uh, set of matchups we've got ahead. Obviously, two big shock results as, we, as we've covered on this channel. The Ds and the Power both being subjected to straight sets exits thanks to Carlton and GWS. It was a very, very entertaining set of semis. And today, we're going to preview the exciting prelim finals. And you just get the sense that even though there's two very clear underdogs going into these games, the spirit and the character that these teams have played with adds a genuine level of intrigue to these prelims and I can't wait to see what they're going to dish up. So, of course, we're going to talk about Collingwood and GWS first and then Brisbane hosting Carlton at the Gabba on a Saturday twilight game, I believe that is. My tipping in finals has gotten not better at all. Actually, it's been really poor. It got worse this weekend. Obviously, both underdogs won. I had tipped the Ds to win and I had tipped the power to win at home and both teams were found wanting. For the Ds in particular, it's, it's spelling a run of form in finals that has been pretty poor since their 21 premiership. They've lost four on the bounce. Uh, we'll talk about that in another video. Before we get into it, make Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and if you're enjoying it I'm not going to twist your arm if you don't want to subscribe that's cool but plenty of action to come uh, obviously for the rest of this final series and then the trade and draft period as well this channel's got a little bit of life yet so subscribe if you're enjoying the content and you can come along for the ride all right so the first game we've got is obviously Collingwood versus GWS a rematch of the 2019 prelim between these two sides in which we saw a shock upset back then GWS have proven themselves to be a very very good finals candidate uh, in every year they made the finals they've won a final and that level of spirit that they have, like I previously suggested, does make them a genuinely formidable opponent for Collingwood in this game. Now we'll talk about Collingwood first. Obviously, um, in terms of their run of form, they're coming off a week off. Obviously, after beating Melbourne in week one in a low scoring battle, they were the better side for three quarters, kind of shut up shop in the last quarter and the Demons almost came back and won it. But overall, I guess in terms of their form lines, they've been a little bit patchy at the back end of this season. Their defense looked a little bit disorganized. Of course, they did have a couple of outs in particular in Moore and Dacos. So they're now reinforced and they're in a good position to go into this prelim final. While they have been patchy and I've just talked up GWS, I think there's no doubt that Collingwood has established themselves as the best team this, this year. They've been uh, top or second this year in for every round except for four rounds. So being a home side playing at the MCG, you've got to give them a red hot chance. GWS's form line has also been really interesting. Obviously in round 15, I think they were sitting 15th or 14th on the ladder. I know that Carlton and GWS were both 14th, 15th. I can't remember which one was higher. But their back end of the year has been outstanding and they've beaten some really good teams and they've won away from home. They're a very, very good side on the road, it seems, this year. Their finals performances, you know, even the round going into finals against Carlton, kind of a dead rubber for Carlton admittedly, but they won that game by five goals and they've continued that form going into the finals with with, uh, obviously a four or five goal win over the Saints at the MCG. It helps that they've just played at the MCG and won. And then of course, traveling to Adelaide against an opponent that beat them by 51 points late in the season. They came over and, you know, looked the better team for all four quarters. They were very polished. In particular, their midfield depth was on show. Stephen Cornelio came in and had, you know, a fantastic performances, 30 touches, two goals, eight clearances, 13 score involvements, which is fantastic. And he's one player that missed out on the 2019 grand final. Obviously with the way that game panned out, he's probably glad for that, but he is playing for a potentially his first grand final appearance as well. But like I said, three away wins there to the Giants. Their runner form going into this prelim is excellent. It's always worth looking at the head-to-head -head between two sides uh, in any preview, and GWS obviously have shocked them back in 2019 at the MCG. So it's a little bit of a different playing group. Obviously, a lot of the established um, you know, veterans are still there, but they've obviously gone through a list transition in that time as well. But still, it'll bode well for them that they have done this in the exact fixture in 2019. Back in round nine this year, Collingwood beat them by 65 points at the MCG, and again, that was kind of a different Giants side. It's certainly in terms of the form that they were producing, they've really turned it on in the back end of this year. Last year they played at the MCG and it was much closer in 11 points. So Collingwood have won the last two clashes of the MCG between these two sides. Now last week, because I uploaded the video so late, I was able to give you some genuine team news. This one is more about speculation because it is only Tuesday by the time you're watching this. Uh, Taylor Adams has been ruled out for the prelim, which is a bit of a blow for Collingwood when you consider GWS's midfield depth. There was also a Tom Green MRO um, concern. I haven't been able to find any other information at this, so I don't even know if it was looked at, but I saw it talked about in one of those shows and Dacos is obviously going to be coming back in for this game as well. So some welcome replacements as well. In terms of, you know, key matchups and factors, 
factors going into this game. Uh, I think the midfield battle will be interesting. GWS have a very formidable uh, midfield and they smash Port Adelaide in the clearances in this metric as well. And particularly with Taylor Adams out, that is a little bit of a blow from a Collingwood point of view. The Pies also will have a defensive headache because Jesse Hogan has quietly become quite a formidable key forward, particularly in the last four weeks. He's kicked 16 goals and he kicked four in last week's semi-final. The opponent for Toby Green will also be an interesting one. There's a bit of talk that it'll either be Maynard or Quaynor, but either way, the Pies have some options. But obviously, shutting Toby Green out of the game will be key because I think this will be relatively close. So finally, to offer my prediction, um, there's a lot of concerns that I've really raised for the Pies here, but ultimately, they are the better team. And you get the sense that they are a big game team as well. And I think the team football that they play and the reintroduction of Dacos and Darcy Moore, obviously, back into the side after that hamstring injury. With Taylor Adams out, it, it's not as though Collingwood are short on midfield rotations. Obviously, you know, Tom Mitchell has been in and out of that primary sort of rotation. You got to go in crisp as well, guys who can pinch hit in the middle there. So overall, I'm going to go the home side. I think GWS have enough character and spirit, phrases I've used already in this video. But overall, I think the pies will be too good and they're not going to let this opportunity slip again. There's a different feel to this Collingwood under McRae and they'll win this by 17 points. Okay guys, before we continue with the rest of the video, I do have an important message to share with you. As you'd know, this year, True Footy has started working with the fantasy platform called Game Day Squad. And on behalf of Game Day Squad, I have something pretty awesome to share with you. And that is, if you haven't already, that they have just launched for AFLW. That means you can start fresh with a new squad and team and again, win weekly prizes. This is your chance to get ahead of the game and make a team for the start of the brand new season. So make sure you follow the link in the description to both creating a team on Game Day Squad and signing up to the True Footy League, which is of course completely free. Let's transform women's fantasy Aussie rules into a sensational reality. Secondly, we've got Brisbane versus Carlton, another very intriguing prelim final. This is going to be, there's a little bit of an interesting narrative to this one, obviously. Michael Voss is one of the greatest Brisbane Lions ever, if not the best, and he captained the club to three premierships, and now he's coaching against them in a prelim final for Carlton. You also factor in, he was the coach there for five years, and I do remember, I think that was the last time these two sides met in a final, was at this ground back in 2009, and Voss was coaching the Brisbane Lions, and the Lions won that narrowly. So an interesting bit of theatre going into this game. Uh, let's talk about form. The Lions have been, you know, really consistent this year. There hasn't been too many blips on their radar. You know, obviously, I think the last one and perhaps the only really bad loss they had this year was when they lost to the Gold Coast Suns. But since then, you know, they've been really good at home. They were clinical in the first qualifying final. Obviously, their last game was a bye. So while there has been, you know, a couple of finals here and there where the Lions haven't delivered, they're also pretty finals experienced now. So from a form point of view, I don't think there's too many concerns for the Brisbane Lions. Carlton have stepped up in a very impressive manner, uh, obviously winning two high High intensity finals, their pressure was good, and you, you even get the sense there's upside there because while they came to play and you know their intensity was great, they were still a little bit rattled at times and a bit fumbly. And thankfully, Melbourne kind of didn't make them pay on the scoreboard where they kicked nine goals, seventeen, which is not actually taking away from Carlton. I'm actually suggesting that this is now their third final in a row, and with that extra bit of experience, maybe that composure could actually be a nice bit of upside for them going into this game. And of course, it does make me wonder a little bit that the round twenty three clash between Carlton and Collingwood last year was kind of like a final and it's almost as though they've learned from that loss and you know their form in close games this year has actually been pretty good particularly in finals which is where the you know that's the most important but yeah the Blues obviously had an amazing second half to the year uh I think they won 12 of the last 13 games something ridiculous like that and in that time they've beaten the Pies the Power and the Ds these these two sides haven't met since round eight early this year and again sort of like Hollywood and GWS's previous clash it was almost so far ago that it doesn't really seem too relevant Brisbane did win that game by about five goals or four goals at Marvel Stadium, but you feel like this is a completely different ball game now. The Gabba also hasn't been a really happy hunting ground. The last time Carlton won there was in 2013, and ironically, that is the last time that they made finals. But on the plus side, you know, Carlton haven't been a great side since 2013. Obviously, there's a few wooden spoons in there. This is obviously their first and finals appearance in 10 seasons. And considering that, their form at the Gabba hasn't actually been bad. So I don't think this ground will hold any fears for them, other than the fact that Brisbane are extremely hard to beat at home. In fact, the Lions last lost at home in round 23 last season and have won 13 consecutive games at the Gabba. Again, we can speculate a little bit on some team selection news. Uh, Mackay and Martin will be back. Martin was suspended. Mackay recovering from that concussion. Uh, it does create a little bit of a headache almost with the selection of tools. I think the Pitney and DeConing um, duo kind of worked well. And, and does adding an extra tall really improve their mix? Well, you're also talking about a, a common medalist who has had some really patchy form this year. But it'd be interesting to see what they do from a tactical point of view. For the Lions, uh, you've got Jack Gunston also pushing for a return. There were a couple of injuries sort of 
scares for Carlton. Uh, Akers and Doherty had you know little injuries throughout the game. Akers has been declared fit, I think. Not too sure about Doherty, and uh, Weedering is also a little bit sore. Apparently, I think he has a sore wrist and got hit in the throat. But all three of those players I expect to play. In terms of where this game's going to be won and lost, well, both of these sides have so many weapons. Uh, obviously, the midfield comes to mind. Uh, both sides are really strong stoppage teams. Carlton's the number one team from scoring from stoppage. Uh, but interestingly, against the power of the Lions, midfield really cranked it up and kicked 13-3 from clearance, which is unbelievable. This will be a tough game, to be honest. It's hard to imagine Carlton in this form not showing up and giving it everything. And and making it a really good contest. I would love to see Carlton win, but to be honest, I actually want both of these sides to win. And that's one thing I'll say before I give my prediction is that I'm kind of happy with whatever potential grand final matchup we get. Collingwood versus Brisbane are the best two sides of the competition. Collingwood versus Carlton would be an unbelievable rivalry grand final. GWS versus Carlton would be unbelievable purely for the bizarreness of the narrative of them being 14th and 15th in round 15. And would be, what is that, like 5th versus 7th in the grand final? That's never happened before. And then finally, GWS versus Brisbane. When was the last time we had an interstate grand final? And it'd be two teams that, well, GWS has never won a flag and the Lions haven't won in 20 years and have also been through a lot of shit in the, you know, 2014, even earlier than that period. So whatever outcome happens, I'm pretty happy. I am going to tip the team that I think has been better this year and is extremely hard to beat at the Gabba. And I'll see the Lions to win this by, I'll say it's a close game for three and a half quarters and they run away late to qualify for a first grand final in 20 years against the same opponent. That's not true. They played Port Adelaide in 2004. Ah, that would have been such a nice point to make. Either way, 20 year anniversary, Brisbane win this game by 29 points and lock up a grand final against Collingwood. That being said though, my finals tipping has been horrendous, so we'll see what happens, but I don't mind being wrong because like I said, any outcome is exciting. As always guys, I look forward to your comments in the comments section below. Let me know what your preferred grand final is and your predicted grand final and any other tidbits for this upcoming weekend. It's going to be very exciting and then right around the corner we've got the Brownlow medal, so I'm going to have to start making content about that. I haven't even thought about it. But look forward to your input and I will see you in the next video that I do, whatever that may be. Appreciate you guys and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.